Hey there YouTube, I got a pretty cool video for you today and I want to talk a little bit about VFDs. Uh, I know a lot of guys uh, who don't have variable speeds would like to get variable speeds or have thought about it. So I want to talk to you a little bit about what it takes to uh, get a VFD, get it hooked up and some recommendations on the kinds of VFDs you may want to consider. So I look forward to the video. Okay, before we talk about the VFD itself, Let's first talk about the kinds of motors that you hook up to VFDs. Now this here, this is, uh, this is a really nice disc sander, by the way. If you need a disc sander, it's an AMK. Really nice unit. I really like it. But what is important here is uh, this right here. This is your uh, three-phase motor. So you can see here that the phase is three. Uh, you can see it's 60 hertz. That's what it runs. And at 60 hertz, it's 1700 RPM. Then another one, if you can see it here, the voltage is either 208 or 230 or 460. So uh, when you wire it in here, there are different options that will allow you to wire it in different ways. And uh, there's a little chart here. The reflection makes it hard to see. It tells you which wires to put which to get what voltage. So you need a three-phase motor. This one has what's called a 56C mounting plate. A lot of grinders are set up to accept this bolt pattern and this face configuration. So a motor like this, you can find these motors on, you know, Marketplace or eBay or different things. And you can sometimes get these for really cheap. Uh, you know, somebody had a bunch of them sitting around. And so... But this is what you need, a three-phase motor such as this. This one happens to be sealed. Uh, you can't see it back there, but it's a sealed unit, so it doesn't get inside the motor all the dust that you're going to create. Now, let's look at our VFD, which is right here. Now, this VFD, uh, for this beast, has two motors. Um, this is the entry-level VFD that you can get. So if you're really doing it on the cheap, uh, you, I've seen VFDs like this for $89 on Amazon. I'll link, I'll link them in the, uh, in the description. But this is your basic sort of Chinese VFD. And really the only buttons you end up using on this, that starts it, that stops it. And this little guy here is your speed control. All the way up, all the way down. Now, one of the interesting things about a VFD, so... Let's take the motor over there. Let's say it's 1700. With a VFD, you can run that all the way down to you know spinning very slow, or you can double it or quadruple it in some cases, depending on what you're doing. VFDs are a relatively new invention. It stands for uh, variable frequency drive, and uh, it allows you to do really cool things. In fact, centrifuges that uh, refine uh, nuclear material to to uh, to make uh, uh, nuclear bombs are centrifuges that are usually run by VFDs. So these can be really powerful and make motors do things that they you know wouldn't naturally do if you just plug them in. And spinning centrifuges at super high RPMs is one of them. So depending on the VFD, normally with these motors you don't want to go more than twice the motor's rating. Um, and on some of them, that's all they allow you to do is twice as much. Some do a little bit more. Let's talk a little bit about how these guys are hooked up and how they're wired. I chose to start with this. You know, this would be my last choice of a VFD. But, hey, you get a cheap motor on eBay and you buy a VFD like this on Amazon. So maybe for $150, $200 all in, you got a variable speed uh, situation for your, uh, for your grinder. Now, to be clear, the single speed motor that might be on your grinder that's just a standard single phase single speed motor uh this does no good for that it has to be a three phase motor but let's talk about how it's wired because i think a lot of people get intimidated by the way in which these are wired so i want to bring you down in here and show you this so this is the input wiring for uh this particular uh of vfd now this is a 220 uh this is a 220 so the way it's hooked up, don't tell OSHA, because usually these days they like you to have a neutral. This is your one hot leg, 
this is your other hot leg, and this is your ground. Pretty simple. Pretty simple to wire. Now, let's go over to the other. This is your output side. So you got your ground down here. Then you just got your three legs. Now on three phase, there's just three hot legs like this. One, two, three. And you might be asking yourself, Gary, how do I know which leg to hook up to which whatever? Well, it doesn't exactly matter uh, too much. Basically, hook them up in whatever order. Turn it on. If it's spinning the wrong direction, pick it either two, these two, those two, these two, and flip them. Once you flip them, it'll run the other direction, and you're hooked up. So hooking the VFD to the motor, super simple. Hooking the power to the VFD, super simple. So now what do VFDs do? Well, as, as I've sort of talked about, they speed up and slow down the motor. But that's not the only thing they do. They do a couple other little fancy fun things, too. They, um, when you turn a, a single speed motor on that doesn't have a VFD, you turn it on and bam, it just starts. Actually, in fact, I haven't turned this on. I don't even know if it's plugged in. Let's see. Oh, that's not good. Let's try that again. Woo! You know, I haven't turned that on for a while. Back that up. Um, so it just bam, fires on. Bam, fires on. This one slows down pretty quickly just because I think there's a lot of friction on the platen there. Uh, and it's not an especially big motor. Now, this is a nice motor. This is a Bader. A little shop knife there. See that? Never know when you need to open something up or whatever. This is a Bader single speed, half horsepower, single phase motor. I can't hook this up to a VFD. But when you turn it on, just bam, cracks on. When you turn it off, it just bam, cracks off. Uh, with a VFD, there's a ramp. And you can actually adjust the ramp. You can make a really slow ramp time or a really fast ramp time. Then it ramps down. So it's like an electric brake, like on your drills, like your cordless drills. When you let go how they stop, similarly, these will stop. And I think we can see this demonstrated here with this guy. Turn this VFD on. And when I turn it on, see? That motor could have immediately got that up to full speed. Now, let's run it up pretty fast here. Okay, now I'm going to turn it off. Now it's turning off. Um, now this may not seem fast, but watch carefully. You see how that was broke? There was a break on that. I'm going to do it again, but this time I'm going to turn the VFD off. And that is just going to run, run forest, run and run and run, and run and run. I'm actually going to turn the VFD back on so it'll stop it. Watch. So that's the other thing a VFD can do for you. You can do that. Now that we know what they do, let's, let's talk about specifically each VFD. I have five for you to look at. So the first one is this. This is... Pretty cheap one. You could get something like this on uh, Amazon. Uh, I've seen them as little as about $89. You got your start. You got your stop. You got your speed up and slow down. This one has a sort of cool feature, if I can get it off here. Mm. Man, I just had this off last night. Jeez. So you have a little plug there. You have a little plug here. So you can make this like a remote and put it somewhere else. Uh, to control this. These other buttons are to get into the menus and set those ramp speeds and if you're going to double your frequencies and those different kinds of settings. Now, these cheap ones, most of them, not all of them, but most of them will get you two horsepower. I see a lot of them on there for three, but they have to have a 220 input and that's not always super convenient for everybody. So, heads up on that. Uh, they're easy, easy enough to wire. This isn't actually OSHA compliant, I don't think. You know, like stick your finger in there and get zapped. Uh, so it's not the great, greatest arrangement for managing wire either. But they're cheap. They work. There's one other weakness to this style. Uh, and I'm going to show you a second one. So this is a chi cheap Chinese one. But it's got a little fan in there. And it sucks in. Uh, it sucks in air. 
That certainly does suck. The problem with that is um, you're in a shop where you're making knives and you're grinding wood and you're grinding metal, you're grinding all these things, and it's going in there. Now, what guys do, <clears throat> they'll make a, a, like an enclosure for it, maybe even about the size of that white plate. They'll make an enclosure, they'll seal it so that just this part is showing, or they'll even move it further away, get the extension cable. I think I have an extension cable for this. Put this in another part of the shop um, and make it work that way. So you can extend the life of these. If you don't do something like that and put it right by the grinder, you know, these things are going to burn up in a year or so, um, depending how much you're using it, maybe even sooner. So this is your first one, 89 bucks, 100 bucks, 150 bucks, depending where you get it from. Uh, they work. They do the job. It's an entry point. I am uh, I am among those who say uh, uh, buy once, cry once. You know, pay, get a better one. So there is a better version of this, but it's si similar to this design. There's a KB. I'm going to roll in some uh, footage of that. This is very similar uh, to this in terms of its weakness, with not being well. Some of them are NEMA, NEMA four compliant or IP65, uh, so they're like weather sealed, like they could be outside. Uh, there is a KB version of this that has some of the features of my favorite VFD that we're gonna talk about in the end, but its big weakness is uh, it's not sealed, it's not weather sealed, and it's got its wires sticking out like this, so really it should be inside of some other kind of box. Okay, let's go to the next VFD on the list. And you guys have already seen it here hooked up. You know to have a frying pan here. I was just thinking about like trying to fix it, but this rust is pretty bad. Okay, that's off topic. Back to the topic at hand. So this VFD, actually I really like this one. This has a NEMA 1 IP50 rating, which is probably, and let me just give you the show you the model number for this guy. So you can see it. Hopefully it's focusing for you. Oops, focus, focus. So this guy's not bad. It actually came with the grinder. Uh, it's a little less expensive than the full uh, sized one of these that we're going to do. This guy does, I believe this is just a one horsepower version of it for this one horsepower motor. This thing works great. I love this. It's got the forward and reverse on it. Got the off and on. Uh, a couple of mine do not have the off and on. Uh, one of the cool things, these are so common, you can buy these switches, so even if it doesn't have it on there, you can add it later. So this guy runs on 110. That's handy. It only puts out a maximum of a horsepower. You can do a few less. You can It ramps up, it ramps down, it does all the things that you want it to do. It's great. So this would be number four, my number four choice. Um, I've been very pleased with this. My shop's not that dusty all the time, so I've had no issues. Let's go to number, actually, this is number three. The uh, other KB27D is my number four. This is number three. This is, uh, I believe it's a KB something or other 24D. So the 24s are one horsepower and the 27s are two horsepower. But we'll talk a little bit more about that. Let's go to the other one. Okay, in many ways, this one is much like the other one I just showed you. The difference between that one and this one is this is the K-Back series. And this one has a NEMA 4 IP65 uh, case. So it does everything that one does uh, for the most part. Uh, this one has a start-stop uh, in addition to the forward and reverse. That one uses the forward and reverse as uh, also the start-stop. So there's a little extra. And this, I, I've never used on any of them, auto, manual, so I don't know what that's all about. But uh, if you look, now you'll see this is a dusty, and I cleaned this off <laughs> to show you guys. But you can see, I mean, this is only, you know, a few minutes worth of grinding this uh, dust. But you can see how much dust collects. But this is just passive back here. You know, it's got those fins, and it's cooling. It's totally sealed. It's got those hinges there, so it, when you want to hook it up, and then... Uh, see if I can get you down in there. Uh, that's that's how the wires go in and out of it. So this is my favorite kind. This is a 24D, so it means it's only one horsepower. So that's why it's my number four 
choice. Now let me show you, sorry, my number two choice. I'm getting it backwards. Let me show you my number one choice in VFD. Okay, this is my number one choice in VFD. This is also a KBox series. See, yeah, it says it down there. This is a NEMA 4, IP65 as well. Uh, it's much like the other one, except for it's capable of two horsepower. Now, both of those other ones take in uh, 110. Uh, this one takes in 110 or 220. With 110, you can get up to a horsepower and a half. Now, that's unique. Now, that's a two horsepower motor, uh, nice and clean back there uh on this one that's unique because most of the 110 vfds will only give you one horsepower but on this one you can get a horsepower and a half and that's plenty you're not going to bog this down uh and if you are you're, you're pressing too hard you need to back off um a horsepower and a half is plenty but if you need that two horsepower this will get it with a 220 but it's super versatile because maybe you don't have a 220 plug where you want to put your grinder. So uh, it's really handy to be able to go between 110 and 220. Not many of them do that. Now, the one that I had mentioned be before, the what I would call the number four, the uh, KB Genesis that did not have this enclosure, it does everything this does, but it's more prone to dust. Uh, and you only save uh, the the other version that's like three hundred and seventy bucks. These are about four fifty five hundred. So I highly recommend uh, the one horsepower one over there is maybe three fifty. I highly recommend going for the gusto. Buy once, cry once. Buy this VFD. Most of your favorite knife makers uh, use this VFD. It is ubiquitous. If you <laughs> you know if you look at a uh, if you look at, well, Ameribraid has uh, ha, ha, has had some of these. They also have another brand that they're looking into because they had some supply issues back in the day. But m for the most part, most of your high-end grinders um, that people are selling these days are going to come with one of these. So this is my number one recommendation. Uh, and it has your start-stop, your forward-reverse, your power, which I want to get one of these. Since I've shot this video, I realize I need two or three of these. Because it's really handy to shut this off, you know, rather than, you know, doing it that way. It's actually off, but it takes a second for the light to go out. But, yeah. Yeah, it's handy just to be able to shut the VFD down when you're not using it. So that is my recommendation for VFDs. That tells you a little bit about wiring them. It is not rocket science. It is not out of range. Like, if you just want to get started. Uh, frankly, if I had to pick two of these VFDs... Uh, it would either be this one or the cheapest one until I could save up to get this one. So that's my recommendations for you. I hope that helps. I hope that sheds a little bit of light on VFDs and and the, the choices out there. There are lots of other brands. Um, there are a lot of Chinese-made brands that kind of spring up. Uh, but the KB Genesis is sort of been the old workhorse. It's been around for a long time. They're pretty ubiquitous. If you get lucky, sometimes you can even find them used. I hope this has been helpful to you. If it has, go ahead, hit the like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.